Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna talk about the PRM. So this video is actually requested by Niraj. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but one of our viewers actually asked to discuss the PRM, which is the Professional Risk Management Designation. It's from the PRMIA, so the Professional Risk Management International Association. Um, I'd actually never heard of this designation, and so I dug in to figure out Basically, how does this compare to the FRM, which is done through GARP, which is the Global Association for Risk Professionals? Uh, the reason I'm comparing the two of them is because I have the FRM, I understand the FRM, and I think it's a pretty good certification and kind of good refresher, I guess, on risk and kind of gets you the basics. So I compared the FRM to the PRM to see kind of how they compare and to give you my opinion on the PRM. Uh, please note, I do not have the PRM. I have not studied for it. This is just my opinion based on both the materials the FRM provides online against the PRM and the materials they provide online. So the PRM has four exams or tests. They're like two to three hours per exam. So the four topics for these exams is finance theory, financial instruments and markets, which makes 30% of your exam scores. Uh, the second one is mathematical foundations of risk measures, which makes 20% of your scores. The third one is risk management practices, and that makes 40% of your scores. And the fourth one is case studies, governance, best practices and ethics, and that makes 10% of the exam. So in general, from looking at the exam and looking at the information, and I'll provide a link below to PRM's website so you can get more information if you're interested in actually getting the certification. Their exam just doesn't seem very in depth. And so I actually dug deeper and looked and each one of those four categories breaks down into more detailed sections. It looks comparable to the FRM, but for some reason, it just seems like they're lacking a little bit of information. And I really didn't like that they went on there and advertised that they're like the best global certification for risk because that's kind of like a self-declaimed title. I feel like they ignored the fact that the FRM and GARP is kind of pushing their certification. And I'm by no means paid by either organization or pushed for either of them. But the issue is, is that there just was only four books for the PRM. So if you're kind of wondering this in comparison to the FRM, you're like, Dimitri, it seems the same. They have books. Well, when I studied for this in 2015, there's eight books, I believe, for the FRM. So that's a lot of information you have to cover. And it's a struggle to get through all the information. I think the FRM does a good job at doing like a broad cover of everything. I think the PRM and the FRM both would do a good job at kind of getting... Um, a good overview, like I said, of everything, a little bit more understanding. Uh, for industry practitioners, we typically dive really, really deep into like one thing. So for example, for the last year, I guess two years almost now, um, I've just been doing like credit risk and scorecard modeling. So basically my mind is set on scorecards and credit, but I used to work in PPNR and operational risk. And so they're completely different tasks, but I think both exams will do a good job at kind of giving you the overview of both. Um, the last kind of piece of critique here for the PRM is I didn't see any requirements of work experience. And I think the PRM's goal is to be like a graduate certificate, uh, meaning that like you get it while you're in graduate studies or you're in school, even like undergrad, you'd go in and get the certificate and take the exams and study while in school. And then you'd have this as like a marketing tool to say like, you know a lot about risk because you've taken it. In contrast to the FRM, you have to have two years of work experience. So I thought this was kind of ridiculous when I took the exam, but I think it sheds more light onto the material and makes it more relevant. You're not just memorizing a lot of information out of the books. You're really trying to see how the information in the books applies to your real life world. And then the FRM also has continuing education, which is optional. I think it's kind of odd. I kind of wish it was like required or mandated, but it's not, it's optional for the FRM. The uh, PRM, I didn't see any continuing ed. So I think the exam for the PRM would be good. It'd be a good certification. However, if you're gonna go get a risk certification, I think you should go get the FRM. For the basic reasons that A, I think the material covers more topics in more depth. Uh, two, you have to have continuing education and risk management and quantitative finance as a whole is changing like every single day. And so you have to keep up with this. There's a lot of work to be done. 
I go to a lot of webinars online through GARP. Uh, I look at papers online. I'm constantly active in different forums online, trying to keep up with everything that's going on. So I think this continuing ed is a very important part. And third of all, I think having the two years work experience during or before your FRM exam or your risk exams, I think is more beneficial because you understand things in greater depth instead of just memorizing it. So my big beef with the PRM2 is that you can kind of like knock off doing the entire exam if you take different exams. So if you take the CFA, that knocks off I think three out, or I think three out of the four exams or two out of the four exams. And then if you take the associate PRM, which is like the dumbed down version of PRM, and I think it's more for like high level management not everyday risk, but areas that kind of work with risk, which is, I think is a good job. I mean, it's a good certification, something that people can do that don't need the depth. But if you take basically both of those, that will get you the same certification as the PRM. So I don't like this at all. I think it's complete garbage. Um, you should have to put the work in to get the PRM. I understand you take the CFA. In my opinion though, the CFA it doesn't hold a candle to the FRM when it comes to risk management. If you want to know a lot, be an expert in finance and accounting, the CFA is great and amazing. But for people like me who work in models and risk management constantly, it doesn't really add that much value. So by being able to knock off exams by taking the CFA, I just think it's kind of a waste of time. And I don't have a lot of respect for the PRM based on that. But in general, as a conclusion, guys, the PRM I think is fine if you want to go get a certification. If you really want a better certification, I do think the FRM is a better certification because it's a little more rigorous and I think it covers a little more of the material. If you've taken the PRM, uh, I'd love to see below what you think. Like, did you really think it covered all the topics? Um, do you agree? Do you not agree that you need work experience? And is there actually continuing ed part of the program? I didn't see it online. Their website seemed kind of vague or just the exam itself doesn't have a lot of content. So I'd love to hear from you guys below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.